Son of God, and you are high and lifted up. Oh, the world will praise your great name, your great name, God, your great name, your great name, your great name. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you alone, God. You are worthy, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we're going to sing that song, Waymaker. Yeah, and he's a Waymaker. Let's sing that out. Let's worship him and thank him this morning. You are here, God. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving. I worship you, God. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are. You are way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here touching every Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. We worship you, God, I worship you. You are here, turning lights. Turning lights around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship. So we declare, you are, you are way. Miracle worker, promise keeper, God in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, God in the darkness, that is who you are, that is who, that is who you are. That Miracle worker, promise keeper, that is the darkness. That is who you are. You are the way maker. You are way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, that is the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, let's worship Him this morning. Of 
Jesus that sets us free, oh Lord. We give you glory this morning. We give you praise. We give you honor, oh God. Oh, Shando Robo Bobo Yasariende. Oh, worthy is the Lamb, oh God. La ba 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 yo Shando Robo Bobo Bobo Yasariende. Ye le be 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 ba 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 yo Shando Robo Bobo Bobo. Hallelujah, oh gracious God, gracious King. We love you in this place, Lord. Shando Robo Yasariende. Hallelujah, church. Amen. We want to join together this morning in prayer. Amen. Why? Because we know that there's power in prayer, church. We want to believe God for salvation for Imran's family. Amen. And maybe you're here this morning. You have family members that are not Christians, that are not born again. Pray for them today. Lift them up before God. Amen. Believe God for their salvation. Believe God would send Christians to them. Amen. Witness to them. And uh, let's believe God together, church. Uh, Let's also pray for Adam's uh, older brother. Amen. Uh, To be saved. uh, Salvation uh, for Nicole's sister. Amen. For Simona and to renew her mind. Let's also pray for... Uh, Tracy's sister as well, Patricia, to, for salvation. Uh, let's pray for Eric and Anna's family for salvation. Let's pray for Anna's work tribunal, amen, that God uh, would move her and uh, in favor of Anna, amen. Let's pray for Leighton and family. Uh, let's also pray for uh, Christian, uh, uh, Marvin, uh, Dylan for salvation and guidance, uh, Pray for Phil for healing. Uh, He had a heart attack. He's recovering. Let's believe God for him and for salvation for him. Let's continue to believe God for a new uh, church building. Let's pray for Mark and Anne for salvation. Let's pray for the up-and-coming youth concert. uh, Amen. To bear lasting fruit, church. uh, And let's believe God that God's going to speak to us today, help us today. Amen, that we would leave this place refreshed. Also, let's pray for our children. Amen, pray for the children of the church, for the youth, our youth group, our Sunday school, kids as well, for all the babies as well. Let's believe God to strengthen them because they are the future. Amen, let's pray together. Let's believe God. If you have a need this morning, lift it before God. He wants to hear from you. We're going to pray. Amen uh, for, amen, uh, Pastor uh, Kimar and his wife there in Jamaica. Amen. Uh, they're in one of our churches there in Saint, an area called St. Andrews. Uh, we also want to pray for Slovakia. Amen. And for Newport there in Wales, I believe. Uh, let's pray for those places uh, and let's believe God. Also pray for uh, uh, a place called Islamabad. Amen. In Pakistan. Amen. Uh, we just sent a missionary over there uh, to, to evangelize. Uh, and uh, we're going to show you a little video, hopefully a little bit later on. Uh, amen. But I'm telling you, God is beginning to move uh, in a Muslim nation. Uh, and uh, we're beginning to see, uh, amen, uh, people desperate for Jesus. And so let's pray this morning. Let's lay hold of God as Brother Philmon comes and leads us in prayer this morning, church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you, God, that we can come before your throne, God, with these needs and these requests, Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, we are praying, God, for all those, God, who are not here, God, who are ill, God. I pray, God, for a speedy recovery, God, for a miracle to occur, healing to occur, God, in their life, God. We're praying, God, for family members that aren't saved, God. Lord, I pray, God, that you, oh God, would touch their heart, God. I pray, God, that we would be an example, God, of your goodness and your love, God. And I pray that they will bend their knee, God, to the name of Jesus Christ Christ. 
God, we pray, oh God, for those, oh Lord God, who are out in the field, God, pastoring God, evangelizing God, being missionaries. Lord, I pray that you will give them supernatural help, God, supernatural anointing, God, favor, God, with those, God, in position of power, God, favor, God, with people, Lord God, in their city, God, and we're praying, God, for a Holy Ghost time, God, this morning, God, let us hear from your word, God, let us be changed. Come on, let's praise, let's worship him, let's glorify his name. Yes, God, we thank you, Jesus, you are worthy, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for this privilege to be gathered here this morning, God. Lord, I pray that you anoint the man of God as he comes behind this pulpit, God, that we will hear a word in season, and I pray that we will be changed. In Jesus' name, I pray. And when you can turn around, make someone feel welcome this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. This morning, church, I want to welcome you uh, out this morning here at the Potter's House uh, Christian Fellowship Church here in Leicester. I want to just first of all say a big, big thank you. Amen to everyone that took part in the all-night prayer meeting on Friday night stroke Saturday morning. We came in the building here at 10 o'clock. Amen. We prayed for so many things. We prayed for the people of our church. And we were here until 6 o'clock Saturday morning. And I just want to say, I was just blown away by the attendance Amen. We had about 40 people come out, uh, amen, and pray. And, uh, you know, we had about 30 people stay throughout the whole night, uh, amen, praying, laying hold of God. uh, And I'm expecting to see great results because of that. Amen. Uh, And so I just want to say thank you to the church, uh, amen, uh, and a real, real blessing, uh, amen, because there is power in prayer, and we lifted up so many needs, uh, We prayed for other churches uh, uh, in our fellowship uh, out of the Norwich congregation. We prayed for our leaders. uh, We prayed for personal things as well. uh, We prayed for people in church. Even though he wasn't here, we prayed for you. Amen. uh, And we're going to believe God together, church. And so I just, like I say, want to express my thanks. uh, uh, I trust you all are rested up well. And uh, amen. Some of you... uh, went to sleep and died, amen, uh, on Saturday, uh, and uh, you were blessed, uh, but you're here this morning, we thank God for that, uh, uh, for those of you who had to go home, uh, amen, thank you though for coming out for a few hours and praying with us, uh, and so uh, we also want to let you know that we've borrowed some chairs uh, until we get ours, uh, and so you can go to the prayer room again now before service, uh, and pray. We've got chairs back in the prayer room again. And so please uh, make sure you come out and pray before the service. Uh, uh, that would be a blessing to us. Just a few announcements. We have youth, uh, amen, this afternoon. And so please, uh, amen, uh, youth, if you're the age between 13 and 19, I believe, uh, amen, come out to that, uh, led by uh, Eric and Anna. And so that's this afternoon at 1.30, I believe. And then we have uh, uh, this coming Wednesday, amen, there will be outreach uh, this Wednesday night, meeting at the clock tower at 7 o'clock. And then uh, uh, Friday night this week, or Thursday night, back in church. uh, We'll be having church service on Thursday night at 7 o'clock as normal. And uh, we're getting ready for the revival coming up soon. But uh, amen, uh, we will be having church uh, this Thursday night uh, at 7 o'clock. Building opens at 6 o'clock for prayer. Friday night is Bible studies. uh, And so please uh, join one of the Bible study groups if you haven't already. Uh, That's at 7 o'clock. Bring some food and soft drinks. Uh, uh, Be a blessing uh, to others uh, as you get round the Word of God, we've got three Bible study groups uh, around uh, Leicester. And so please uh, uh, join in with one of them or ask about them and someone will direct you to, uh, amen, uh, those groups. Uh, also, uh, on Saturday, we have an impact team going to Lincoln. And so if you want to go to Lincoln and make an impact for Jesus, uh, we send out teams uh, 
uh, to help other churches uh, in our fellowship. Uh, we have a church there in Lincoln, uh, doing very well. Uh, and so if you want to be a part of that, please sign up on the back table uh, so that, uh, amen, uh, you'll leave uh, Saturday morning uh, and then you'll be home Saturday evening. Uh, and so please, at the moment, uh, and we've got about nine people, I think, uh, and so we want to get more people on the list if possible. Uh, if you've got a car, please put down and you're able to drive. That'll be a blessing. We will pay your fuel costs uh, if you get a receipt as well. And so that's uh, a blessing as well. And so please put your name on the back table on the impact team list to Lincoln. And then Sunday, amen, we're back here again for our normal services at Bible Hour at 10 o'clock. We're going to be starting a new series. I don't know yet what we're going to be doing. I've got a rough idea, but we're going to be starting a new Bible series uh, uh, this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock. Uh, and then our service starts at 11 o'clock. Uh, and then we also have an evening service tonight at 6.30 uh, p.m. I'll be preaching a different message. I'm amazed that some people think I preach the same message Sunday nights. That's why they don't come. Well, you got no excuse because I don't preach the same message uh, Sunday nights. It's always a different message. Uh, and uh, so come out Sunday night, uh, 5.30 for prayer, 6.30. Uh, and then you'll see the following week, the 18th uh, through to the 21st of April, we have revival. What does that mean? It means we have church Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning and Sunday night with an evangelist. Uh, coming all the way from America, and he'll be preaching here every night uh, and Sunday as well, the 21st of April. Be a part of that. Come and join uh, with us. You'll see also that we'll be having a youth concert on the 27th of April. Uh, Eric has organized uh, 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 a load of uh, uh, other churches are going to be coming with their youth uh, and with our youth. They're going to be outreaching, going on the streets, uh, street preaching, uh, and then they're going to be doing their concert on the, the Saturday night. And so our young people, amen, our young people, do you hear me? Our young people are going to be out and performing and doing a concert on that Saturday night. And what would be a blessing if we're there to support them? Amen. So I want to encourage you to put that date in your diary at 7 o'clock. That will be a real, real blessing. Amen. So that's all in the way of announcements except one more boot camp. Amen. We have every year we have a Potter's House boot camp. This is where the children get nervous. Amen. This is a, a, a boot camp for 11 to 17 year olds. So if you're aged between 11 and 17 year old, you can go on to the Potter's House website. Or you can scan the QR codes. There's one of these lists on the back table. Uh, scan the QR code. You can pay in installments. Uh, it costs £255 per child. Uh, but I do believe you can pay in installments. Uh, and so we also need helpers. Uh, and if you want further details about that, uh, uh, see Tisson about that as he's heading that up. Uh, listen to me. Boot camp is great. Amen. Uh, it really is a blessing, but also not just for the children. We need volunteers as well uh, to help with that, uh, whether that's, uh, you know, helping putting the tents up, uh, whether that's uh, helping in the kitchen. Amen. Because you're going to be feeding uh, around about two or three hundred people. And so uh, uh, every day, three meals a day. And so if you want to help with that or you could be a first aider, you could be a nurse or a doctor and put your services available for the week. Uh, uh, please see Tisson for further information about that. Or perhaps if you have military training, amen, or had military training, you could uh, also uh, be able to uh, uh, help uh, with perhaps being a training instructor or a drill instructor as well. It's a military boot camp. That's what it is. Uh, and uh, uh, let me tell you, it's the best thing for your kids. Amen. They'll be getting up early. Amen. They'll be screamed and shouted at. Amen. Uh, they'll be disciplined. Hello. Amen. Uh, and uh, now some of you kids are getting worried. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and military style. 
And so they'll be having a lot of fun activities as well. They'll be having Bible studies every day. They'll be preached at every single day as well. They have sermons. We have a preacher coming in. Uh, we have a, a pastor that leads all of that and heads all that up. Uh, and so I really do encourage you, amen, if you've got a child between the age of 11 to 17 years old, uh, Amen. Send them to boot camp if you can afford it. Like I said, uh, uh, if you want to pay in installments, you can do that. Uh, if you want to be a volunteer, you can also put your name down. Amen. Speak to Tisson about that. Uh, and uh, amen. That's happening in August. Amen. In August. Uh, and so please, it's the 6th to the 9th of August. And so please be aware of that. Praise God. Amen. That's all in the way of announcements for now. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. As we take uh, our offering this morning. Amen. Uh, just before we take the offering, Matthew, can we uh, show that uh, a video clip, please? This is a, a, a new church uh, that we're uh, planted in Islamabad uh, there in Pakistan. And uh, evangelist Mick Listing. This is Mick Listing. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we, we need your blessing. We need your favor, God. We need you to open the windows of heaven. And Father, in Jesus' name, but I curse it and I command it to dissolve right now. In Jesus' name, God, raise it. Divine help right now flow through these knees, God. In Jesus' name, pray and believe God. Father, I pray for this precious couple, Lord. And right now, by the power of the blood, I'm asking if you have no right or place. I command you to go. Demons can only enter when there's a reason. I want you to pray with me. I want you to love this is your wife. God gives you authority. You are the door of your house. That's Your favor and blessing upon his life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's a, a, a new work that we're starting in Islamabad in Pakistan. Uh, as uh, Vanzas Mick showed you there, uh, um, people were waiting hours. Amen. In their homes for the preacher to come. It's a very uh, Muslim nation, and yet so many people are desperate for Jesus. You saw a manifestation there. Uh, uh, this woman, uh, this wife, was demon possessed, uh, and uh, you know the evangelist spoke to the husband. You need to take authority in your home, and uh, they prayed for this woman, uh, and she got delivered. And you saw her in her right mind. Uh, and so we thank God for what He's doing there in Islamabad, there in Pakistan. Amen. But we also believe God to move here in our city as well. And so uh, we want to also uh, let you know, amen, that we've changed bank accounts now. We have a new banker, amen. Uh, and so uh, please, uh, amen, the, here is the new bank details. Take a, a picture of that or take a picture of the QR code. Uh, and that will also take you to our website for online giving, uh, and uh, if you uh, 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 give online, then you don't have to do anything because that's automatically be changed. But also, uh, please, if you have the old bank account number, please uh, delete that. Take the new uh, bank details uh, and start giving into that account uh, as from the 1st of April. Amen. Uh, and so that would be a blessing. Let's continue to give church into the kingdom Please, uh, amen, uh, uh, be faithful in your tithes, your offerings, and your pledges. If you have pledged uh, an amount of money for chairs, we're looking to uh, uh, refresh all the chairs uh, and get a load of new chairs. Uh, you'll see one or two chairs that we've borrowed from uh, uh, other churches, uh, and just, uh, but they're not the chairs we're going to get. Uh, but uh, I just want you to know that... Uh, Please mark your reference for chairs. 
If you've pledged for that over the next three months, uh, and then we're hoping to have uh, uh, all these chairs that you're sitting on now, the black ones have all been sold. Uh, we already had a load of them go, uh, and so they will be replaced at some time uh, once the money comes in. And so please, please, please uh, uh, make sure you mark your giving. If it's tithe, write tithe. If it's pledge, write chairs, what it's for. If it's for a building fund, write building fund. If it's an offering over and above uh, the tithe, <coughs> then put offering, uh, and that would be a blessing. Please do that uh, so we know which way to direct the money that would be great. Uh, let's give uh, this morning as Brother Brian asks God's blessing. <coughs> Amen. Let's give this morning, church. Let's just start those hands we did this morning. Your grace tonight. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You rest so in the sinner's heart. You lead us by. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember, so remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me, for me. Let's thank God for Brother Philmon. Amen. Uh, just to let you know, there will be no Sunday school this morning. I've... Uh, told Tisan I need all the children in today uh, as I'm going to be ministering in a moment about children and uh, so that's the reason why but before we um, uh, uh, preach this morning I want to uh, uh, do a baby dedication this morning and uh, Toby and Patricia are here with their little boy amen so we want to welcome them up uh, as they come Hallelujah. They've picked the hardest name they could pick for their son. And I've got to somehow or another pronounce it. And, uh, but uh, God's going to help us. Amen. And uh, we do appreciate this couple. Uh, and uh, I want uh, uh, to do some vows in a moment. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is Toby. This is Patricia. And uh, the son's name, we <laughs> Imoran Olawa Semipi. Is that okay? Is that good? I'm gonna call him Olu. <laughs> Olawa. Okay, you say you pronounce your son's name. Okay, so the full name is Imorolua Shemipi, and uh, the short form is Imoro. For short, Imoro. And uh, the second name is Ewoma Zeno. And the both means, uh, the first one means God's wisdom makes me perfect. Or God's counsel makes me perfect. And the second name, Ewoma Zeno, means uh, the goodness of God is here with us. Amen. And so today, uh, uh, these parents, uh, they want to uh, uh, dedicate their child to God. Uh, we don't believe in doing uh, baby christenings. All right, the reason we don't do baby christenings is because it's not biblical. All right, let me say that to you. It's not biblical. You won't find one scripture, amen, about christening your child. And even if you have been christened, I was christened as a child, amen, but my parents didn't know any better then. 
And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about baby dedication. And so, uh, amen. And today they want to dedicate their child. And so I want to lead them through some vows. And they're going to say, I do, uh, after each vow. And then I'm going to ask uh, also uh, 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 the church uh, to uh, say some vows as well uh, uh, to help this family. And so uh, let's uh, speak to Toby and uh, Patricia first. uh, And I want to say to you both, do you solemnly agree to bring up your child in the fear and admonition of the Lord? Amen. Do you promise early to seek to lead, uh, to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and serve Him as Lord uh, as early as your son uh, understands? I do. Amen. And do you pledge uh, to make your home uh, a school for Christian instruction through the teaching uh, of the Scriptures with love and discipline? I do. And also, do you promise... uh, to be the best of your ability and by God's grace to set before your child examples of consistent godly living at home. Amen. And so as you've said these vows, amen, I also want to ask the congregation. Amen. We have Toby and Patricia and their little boy. Amen. And I want to ask you this morning... Will you endeavor to support Toby and Patricia in this task and help them in any way you can in the training of their child? Because as Christians, to reinforce, uh, amen, what we do is we help them by being a Christian example uh, by our word and conduct. And so if you agree with uh, what I've said, we just say, we do. We do. Amen. And so... uh, Amen. I'm going to pray for this young man. Hello. Who's this big man, hey? Amen. So if you'd help me just pray for this little one. Father, I pray, God, your hand of protection be upon God. Imoran, Lord God, I pray, God, fill him with you, Lord. I pray, God, that he would grow to know Jesus, Lord. I pray your hand of protection be upon him. Let him be in good health, Lord. Let him grow strong in Jesus. I ask this in Jesus' name, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for Toby and Patricia, Lord. God, as they have said these vows, Lord, and dedicated their son to you, God, I pray, Father God, let them, God, teach their child the ways of you, Lord. I pray your hand of protection be upon this family, God. Let them be in good health, Lord. Let them continue to grow in Jesus, God, and be a great godly example to us all. And I thank you for this couple, God. I thank you, Lord God, that they've dedicated their son to you, Lord. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If anyone wants to take any photos of this couple, you may do so. Amen. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Praise the Lord. Let's give God praise, church. Uh, Amen. Uh, Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24 this morning. And we're going to be looking at verses 14 and 15 in a moment uh, and I've asked for the children to, to be in service this morning and because uh, I want to preach a sermon I've entitled Teaching Your Children. And the children need to hear this as well because a great Christian who lived uh, over a hundred years ago uh, named C. or G. K. Chesterton, he said these words and he put it all in perspective when asked this question. The question that he got asked was, can anyone tell me two things more vital to the race than this? What man shall marry that woman and what shall be the first things taught 
to your first child. And so, church, think about this. Because I want to tell you that question is so vitally important, uh, especially in the day and age that we're living in. I done some studying uh, this week about this message I'm bringing to you today, and I found this survey that said that every eight seconds, a child drops out of school. Every eight seconds. Every 26 seconds... A child runs away from home every 26 seconds. Every 47 seconds, somewhere in the world, a child is abused. Every 67 seconds, a teenager has a baby today. Every seven minutes, a child is arrested for drug abuse. Every 30 minutes, a child is arrested for drunk driving. Every 36 minutes, a child is killed by a gun. And this week, I'm sure you would have read what's been going on in Finland. This week, a, a boy, a boy, who wore a mask and noise-canceling headphones, a man went into a school and shot some people. These are people that he actually went to the same school with. He spent time with these children as well. And I believe that some people died, some girls were wounded that are still in serious condition. But most of all, what was shocking was that boy was 12 years of age. 12 years of age. Went into a school. I don't even know how he even got a gun at the age of 12. But went into a school and began to shoot the people that he went to school with and killed some and wounded seriously others. This is why church... I want to teach this morning because it's important uh, that every parent here this morning uh, need to understand how important it is that you teach your children the right way. That you actually make the time. Because I believe church in a spiritual being uh, called Satan. I believe church in the devil. And his master plan is to destroy the UK. To destroy, and let me tell you, his number one target is the home. The devil wants to destroy your homes. The devil wants to destroy your families. Your devil wants to take your children away from you. But I want to share with you today, church, And show you today that a decision that you make can help your children for the future. Parents, listen to me. Whether you're a single parent or a couple, amen, I'm telling you now. What you teach your children, amen, really matters. And let me say this. If you're too lazy to teach your children and spend time with your children, that I'm telling you now, you will reap the benefits of that. You will reap the benefits of not taking the time. So let's look this morning at a man named Joshua. Joshua, he made a decision over 2,000 years ago He's standing before his fellow countrymen and he's telling them. He is speaking to them not as the commander and chief of the Israelite army, nor even as a leader of the Israelite nation. He is speaking as a dad. He is speaking as a parent church. 
And uh, he says uh, these words in Joshua 14 and verse 15. He turns round at the very end of verse 15 and he says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we're going to break down that scripture and read that scripture in full in a moment. But can you imagine, church, what could happen, especially in the UK as you're living here now, that if every family made that decision that me and my family will serve the Lord, do you know how much our nation would change? I'm telling you now, crime rate would go down. I believe that our prisons would be a lot emptier if you would make a decision. Even churches today would be more filled because you made a decision. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I believe also, church, amen, if you make the decisions like Joshua, even marriages would be restored. Marriages would be restored as well. Because I believe this morning, church, no family can ever make a greater decision than Joshua and his family made. No father could ever set a greater example of how a father could lead his family than to make this decision. And in these two simple verses... Joshua tells us how we can make sure that in every area of our home, our marriage and our family can change. So let's look firstly at the family must be led to worship God. In Joshua, in our text, chapter 24, I've picked the New Living Translation because I feel that it says it best. It says, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. This is Joshua speaking. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me, he says, and my family, we will serve the Lord. So let's look at teaching your children. Joshua begins in our text, and he says, fear the Lord. You know the problem today with a lot of families? They don't fear God anymore. They don't fear the Lord Here is this man, Joshua. He is talking to his family. He is letting all the families there know that the fear of God begins where? Not in church. It begins in your homes. Hello, parents. It begins in your home. It's very important you get this, church, because... Let me say this, as your pastor, parents seem to have this mistaken idea that we bring our children to church to teach them to worship. Well, I want to tell you that's not true. Amen, because you should not bring your children to church to teach them to worship. You should bring them to church to practice worship. Amen. This is why, amen, I love it when I see kids singing. When I see them taking an effort and singing and rejoices. You know, we have children in our church, amen, they don't even sing. They want to play and scribble. They don't want to get involved. Is that the church's fault? No, it's the parents' fault. It's the parents' faults. Because you're not teaching your kids how to worship God. You know, I don't want to turn around and embarrass Brian and Becky, but their kids are a great example of worship. 
They love to sing. Levi has his own microphone. He has his own iPad. He has his own suit. I watched him this morning. He's singing. He's going for it. That's not because of the church. That's because they take time to teach their children Christian songs, Christian hymns. How many of you take time to teach your children to sing Christian songs every day, worshipping God? Because I'm telling you, church, it's important. Children ought to learn to worship God at home with their parents. At home with their parents. Because, church, uh, later on, in our text, Joshua is going to talk about serving God. That word he used, serve, is used six times in these two portions of Scripture. It means, to church, to fear God. It means to obey God and worship only God. And so above everything else, the number one lessons that parents need to teach their children is to fear God, to have reverence for God, to get under His authority, to understand what it means to know and to do the will of God. And parents, that's your first responsibility. Grandparents, it's your responsibility too to get involved with your grandchildren. Ephesians 6 and verse 4 says, Bring up your children in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Another translation says in the New Living Translation, Fathers, Do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from God. So yes, you're supposed to discipline your children. Some of you, your children run the house. It's not how it's meant to be. The Bible tells us if you spare the rod... You spoil the child. So if you're not disciplining your children, we're not allowed to. Listen, I know I'm even online. There's a correct way to do it. Right? There's a correct way. God gave you a hand and he gave them a backside. Amen. And your hand fits there beautifully. We're not talking about abuse. We're talking about disciplining your children. You can't take the time, church, then you're missing what God's saying. This is why parents, uh, you need to understand God has given you the responsibility of spiritually training your child and also disciplining your child. And I want to tell you, it's not an option. It's actually a command. Hello? Hello? It's a command. The most important lesson we will teach our children is about how to know God, how to love God and worship God. The bottom line of good parenting is to point our children to God, point them to Jesus. Why is this so important? Well, Proverbs 9 and verse 10 of the Living Bible says... Amen. Knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. So every other kind of understanding, if you know God's first, then that will result in you understanding other things. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. Again, the living Bible says, Everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. And so, church, it doesn't matter how much your kids know if they don't know Jesus. It doesn't matter the amount of knowledge 
and how bright your child may be. Because if they don't know God, if they don't know Jesus, because I'm telling you, knowing Jesus is the basic foundation of our lives. I want you to understand it's not enough just to talk about God. It's not enough to just to talk about Jesus. Why do I say that? Because there's a lot of parents today who are not even Christians who talk about God. Did you hear me? There are a lot of parents today that are not even Christians that talk about Jesus Christ. They'll even talk about higher power. They'll talk about the man upstairs. They'll talk about this God or that God. But I'm telling you, that's not enough. We need to make sure parents, grandparents, we point our children to Jesus Christ through whom alone they can have a relationship with God. You know, children can get saved at the age of four or five. They can get saved. They can become born again. And I know that uh, some of you perhaps became Christians later in life. You're saying, Pastor, it's not fair you preaching on this uh, because our children are already grown up. Well, you can still learn some things. Because church, uh, some of you might say, but Pastor, you're preaching this to me, but you know, my children have fled the nest. Uh, I want to tell you it's never too late for them to know God. It's never too late for you to influence your children or even your grandchildren. You know, I've had people tell me they got saved because of a grandmother. Because of a grandmother who prayed and told them about Jesus. That's powerful in itself, church. So let's look secondly at the family must be led to work for God. Joshua, in our text, he charged his family in verse 14 to serve God alone. It says, serve the Lord alone. Amen. What he's saying is, true worship always motivates you to get involved in God's work. Because when you really worship God, you get so full of God, you just want to do something for God. I mean, our prayer meeting on... Saturday or Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, amen, people were so full of God. Amen. We, like I said, we prayed right through till six o'clock in the morning. And I'm telling you, uh, amen, something changed because, uh, amen, you get so full of God, you want to do something for God. So there are two ways you encourage your children to serve God. The first one is by example. By example. And can I say this? Actually, I'm going to say it. Some of you are bad examples. You need to be a good example to your children. Why? Because every parent ought to be serving God in some way in church. Hello. Your children watch. They hear, they see. If you're gossiping, pulling down the church, guess what? Your children will hear. If you're moaning and complaining about other people in church, guess what? Your children will hear. And you don't think that won't impact them? This is why, church, you need to make sure that you're serving God because you're the first example that your child has. Today, we dedicated Toby and Patricia's little boy. They said some vows that they're going to teach their son to 
through their lives and they're going to be godly examples for their child. Ask yourself, are you a godly example for your child, for your children? It may be through ministry. It may be just by coming to church and then see you wanting to be in church. Because I'm telling you now, when you miss church, you're showing your children, oh, church is not important. Hello? Yeah, I, I know children that tell their parents, can we go to church? Can we go to church? They're more excited about going to church than you are. Why is it important to serve God? Well, this is why you ought to teach your children to serve God by your encouragement. Never, ever, don't ever discount the fact that your children, both children and teenagers, they need to learn early in life how to serve God. You need to make sure you're telling them. And I know some of you, you take time reading to your children. You tell them to read the Bible. Amen. These are great things. But they learn from your example. I know a pastor that he has, I think, five children. And they sit down every night, and they're teenagers today. And they read the Bible together as a family. As a family. They eat together. They read the Bible together. They pray together. They talk over the dinner table about the things of God. Some of you, your kid is in that room, your kid's in that room watching that, watching that. Uh, they come and get their food. It's like it's a, you know, a takeaway. Oh, I'll just come and get my food, go back to my room. You're not investing in your children. This is why it's important uh, that you be the right example. This is why I want the children to hear this. Because it's important that you parents teach your children about the things of God. Teach them what's really important in life. What's important is Jesus. Whether you realize it or not, church, your children are picking up values from whether you teach them formally or not. Just by watching you. Just by watching you. They're picking up, church, what your values are. Your children get to see what really is important in your life. And it doesn't matter what you say is important. But it's how you spend your time. How you spend your money. What your calendar tells your children what's important to you. Some of you, family parties, family birthdays is more important than coming to church. You're teaching your children, oh, a birthday party is more important than coming to church. My dad, I didn't go to his birthday parties. Why? Because I told my family I'm going to be in church. Because God comes first. God comes first. Some of you don't come to church because family turn up. Oh, pastor, I'm sorry, I can't come today. Why? Oh, I've got some member of family coming. Bring them to church. Hello. Bring them to church. It's not like it's a whole day event. It's for an hour and a half. Come to church. Bring them to church. Who knows? They might get saved. That's why it's important that you teach your children what's important. Because if you value church, then your children will know it. They'll know on a Sunday morning we're going to church. They'll know on a Sunday night we've got church. They'll know on a Thursday night we've got church. And when we have revival, 
We're in church Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They'll know that because they'll see, church, what you value. And this is why, parents, you have a big part to play. If you value serving in the church, then your children will know it. If you value ministry in church, then guess what? Your children will know it. And if everybody serves something, because everybody does, everybody here, you either serve something or somebody. That's fact. This is why Joshua, in verse 15 of our text, says, he says some very interesting words. He says, if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. So what he is saying is you don't get a choice. You don't get a choice as to whether or not you serve somebody, but you do get a choice in who you serve. In other words, church, the truth is you are serving some type of God right now. You're either serving the true God or you're serving a false God. Because as our text says, everybody serves some God, even atheists. Let me say this to you. Even atheists who claim they don't believe in God, let me tell you, they serve some God. When they say, but I don't believe in God, well, I'm telling you, they believe in the God of self. Hello. They believe in the God of ego. They believe in the God of success, the God of sex, the God of money, or the God of pleasure. But everybody serves some type of God. This is why parents, I ask you again, what are you teaching your children? What values, what examples are you teaching your children? What are you showing them about Jesus? Because I can see who's teaching their children. I could name and shame some of you today, but I won't. Because it's important that you teach your children, you put into them good godly morals now, whilst you still can. So let's look lastly at your family must be led to walk with Jesus. Joshua goes on to say in verse 14, put away forever the idols your ancestors worship when they live beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve God alone or serve the Lord alone. In effect, Joshua said, I don't even keep false gods hanging around. He's telling them, that you need to separate yourself from false gods, false truth, false religions, and you need to walk with the Lord. This is why it's important where you send your children to school. It's important. Because you don't realize, I know people, some people send their children to Crazy schools. I know you're going to say, but pastor, it's a catchment area and all this. I understand and I get that, but you need to believe God to send your children to the right school. Have some, have some morals as well. You know, you can turn around and tell your, your, your teacher, the teachers or the school, I don't want my child going into this lesson because of our Christian beliefs. Nowadays, they want to teach your children about all types of madness. You can have a say in that. Did you know that? You can have a say. Say, no, I don't want. It's amazing. You know, when I remember as a kid going to school and there would be certain children that wouldn't be in class and they were Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses. They wouldn't celebrate Christmas and all that. Because they don't believe in that. And yet they would, their parents would say, no, our child has not been involved 
even in school assembly. I mean, today the, we don't have school assembly in most, church, uh, in most schools. That used to be a thing back in our day. You would start off by singing some Christian songs in school. But look at it now. Oh, we don't want to upset the Muslims. We don't want to upset the other false religions. Listen, we need to stand by what the Word of God says. Joshua is teaching his family we're not going to have false gods hanging around. We're not going to have false religion. I'm going to teach you the right way to walk with Jesus. I don't know of anything that you'll ever do for your children more important than to teach them to have the proper priorities in life. When you go to church, you teach them that God's important. When you go to church, you're teaching your children that church and God is important. Remember, the world will try and steal your children away. Today, there's so many activities, so many things. And yes, your children might put on their parts. But mum, dad, I want to go to the party instead of coming to church. They might even say they hate you. But you're showing them true values. You're showing them true values, church. When you read the Bible to your children, you teach them that God's word is important. When you pray for your children, you teach them that fellowship with God is important. And when you live a life that is pure and clean in what you do, what you say in your homes, where you go, what you watch and what you hear, is so important to your children. So important. So you teach your children that holiness for God is important. This is why the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, this is talking about Jesus. And verse 52, that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And so what I want you to see first of all, the ways that Jesus grew. Jesus grew, the Bible says, in wisdom. That means he grew in intellectual growth. Then he grew in stature. That means he grew in physical growth. Then the Bible says he grew in favor with God. That means he grew in spiritual growth. And then the Bible says he grew in favor with man. That's social growth. So we see all of that in that one verse. We see church, intellectual growth, physical growth, amen, spiritual growth and social growth. All in one verse. That's exactly what you should be doing with your own children. You should be able to teach them to walk with God. Teach them. So that they will have a balanced growth. They will love God with all of their mind. In other words, they will grow mentally. They will love God with all of their strength. That means they'll grow physically. If you teach your children, they will love God with all of their soul. That means they'll grow socially. If you teach your children that the right way, they will love God with all of their heart and they will grow spiritually. You know, when something happens to a child, do they come to the parent and say, Mom, Dad, will you pray for me? That's usually a good indicator of what's happening in your home. Hello? My son trapped his finger in the, the, the lorry one day. I took my youngest son out in the lorry when I used to work on lorries. Uh, 
And I told him to slam the door. I said, you need to slam that door. Because I knew it was a bit of a sticky door. And of course, he put his finger there, his hand there, and he got hold of the door and he... You know the first thing came out of his mouth? Dad, pray for me. Dad, pray for me. They were the first thing. I mean, his finger was flat. It, it was flattened. You know, the nail all went black. Uh, and I could see, but the first thing out of, his, out, out of his mouth was, Dad, pray for me. Why? Because he sent me pray. He'd send me pray. I taught him the value of prayer. This is why, church, it's important what you're teaching your child. Because sometimes, let's be honest, your child always have a lot of questions to ask. And we like to just brush them off sometimes. Take time. Show your children the values. I mean, I can stand up here and talk uh, this morning until I'm blue in the face. I can tell you uh, what to do or even show you how to do it. But in truth, it comes down to your decisions. It comes down to your decisions because, uh, as Joshua said in verse 15, if you refuse to serve God, then you choose today whom you'll serve. You Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the God of the Amorites in whose land you now live? And then he says that powerful statement. He says, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. And so what I want you to see this morning, church, it comes down to a decision comes down to a decision. Parents, what God are you and your family going to serve? Some things in life, yes, are optional. You can choose where you live, right? You can choose where you work, right? You can even choose what kind of car you drive or what bus you're going to take. But there are some decisions you don't get to choose. You have to make. You have to decide about what God you're going to serve. And you might this morning sit there and say, Pastor, I don't have to choose. Well, I want to tell you, you just did. You just did. Because making decisions is a very funny thing sometimes. Because not to make a decision is actually to make a decision. Right? It's a kind of like getting up in the morning. You heard your alarm go off and you ignore it, right? Or you hit the snooze button, then it goes off again. You make another decision, you hit the snooze button again. What you're saying is, oh, I just can't decide whether to get up or not. Well, you just did. You refused to get up. You just decided to continue to lie there. Listen to what Joshua said again in verse 15. At the very end, he said, As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I want you to underline that in your Bibles. Because I want you to notice something right there, parents. I want your attention for a moment. Because I want you to notice something there. Joshua says, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 
didn't give his children a choice. Hello? Do you notice that in text? He didn't say, amen, children, you decide. Right? It's there, isn't it? He is saying to them, in effect, let me spell it out for you. He is saying, children, as long as you are in my house, as long as you are eating at my table, as long as you're sleeping under my roof, you're going to be under my authority. You're going to serve the God that I serve. That's what he's saying. And so parents, if you have children who are living at home and they're not going to church, hello, then you're not living the way that God wants you to live. You're not setting the example even if you have teenage children, you need to tell them, listen, me and my family are going to serve the Lord. If you are not coming to church, then you better go and find a hostel to go and live in. Or I'll give you a sleeping bag and you can go out on the street. Hello? I know some of you are like, Pastor, what are you saying? We got to make our children homeless? No. I'm saying to you if you teach your children the right values, the right examples, amen, about God and Jesus, then they'll automatically want to be in church. You know, when kids don't want to come to church, I'm like, what's going on at home? What's going on at home? What have you been saying? What have you been teaching your children that they don't want to come and worship God? Maybe it's because you've not been teaching them. Maybe it's because you've been too lazy and can't be bothered. This is why it's important, church. This is why you've got to understand, church. I want to explain something to you as well, parents. Do you think on Judgment Day that God is going to hold your children accountable? Do you think that God is going to hold them accountable? I want to tell you God's going to hold you accountable. God's going to hold you accountable. And this is why you must not be intimidated about turning your children against church. Yeah, you know, I was forced to go to church. I was forced to go to Sunday school to start off with. As a kid, I think my parents just wanted me to go to church just so they can get some peace and quiet for a couple of hours. But I'm glad my parents forced me to go to church. I'm glad that my parents know today, Sunday, you're going to be in church. You're going to be in Sunday school. You're going whether you like it or not. Don't let your children dictate to you what's going to happen. Because we live in a world today where children just tell the parents what was happening. That's wrong. You know, let me just use this as an example. You don't turn your children against taking a bath by making them take a bath. Right? Do you? You don't turn your children against taking a bath by making them take a bath or having a shower. You don't turn your children against eating by making them eat at mealtimes. Right? I know it's a bit basic, but the point I'm trying to make is you're not going to turn your children against church by making them go to church. You're actually putting something in them. 
Because I can assure you, if a child grows up and quits going to church, it won't be because you made him go to church. Hello? It won't be because you made them go to church. You know, several thousands of years ago, this guy Joshua stood up in front of of an entire nation and said, you choose what you are going to do. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I raise this question this morning to every parent, to every grandparent here, to mums and dads, some of you that are not even parents yet. Learn from this message this morning. Because have you said or will you say that about your family? Will you say that, you know, me and my house are going to serve the Lord? See, God didn't put you here to win a popularity contest. God didn't put you here to be Mr. and Mrs. Cool Parents. God puts you here to make basic decisions. And as you've heard this morning, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And this is why I say to you, church, as long as your children are in your house, understand that you're accountable for them. As long as they are under your roof, they're under your authority. There have been times I says, well, if you don't agree with what I said, there's the door. There's the door. See, God holds us accountable for whether or not parents were going to give our children spiritual leadership. If you don't believe me, I mean, let me just throw this out before I close. There was a priest in the Bible named Eli. Eli. And you can search this out yourself. Eli, he's a priest. Listen to me. He's a priest as well as a father. He refused to give spiritual leadership to his sons. And basically, he let them do whatever they wanted. So what did God do about that? God said to Eli, who's a father and a priest in 1 Samuel, chapter 3 and verse 12 and 13. He said, in that day I will perform against Eli that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to the end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows. Because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. Hello church. That's a scary scripture, parent. If you're allowing your children to do what they want, look out. Because God judged Eli. Because he let his sons do whatever they want. And God brought judgment upon him. Because he didn't take the responsibility. It's amazing to me. Everybody wants to make children. Everybody wants to make children. But when they have children... They don't want the responsibility of bringing them up. Let's just put them in front of the television or the iPad or the internet. Let them do what they want. Let them hang around who with, with who they want to hang around with. This is why parents, you better know what your kids are up to behind them closed doors. Who they're texting. As you would have heard me said the other night when I preached about all these little messages that teenagers are on the internet and they're, you know, they're social media and they're instant messaging.
You better know what your kids are up to because you're going to be held accountable. You're going to be held responsible. And if you put in the right values into your children, then I'm telling you, it will show down the road. It will show down the road. And yes, there will be times that your children might not find you the most favorable mum or dad. But think of the bigger picture. If you want a healthy family, if you want a happy family, if you want a holy family, then you begin to commit to your life to Jesus Christ. And after you've committed your life to Jesus, you commit your family to Jesus. You commit your marriage to Jesus. You commit your spouse to meet Jesus. You commit your children to Jesus. See, what I want you to understand, and I said this the other night at prayer, Eric and Anna and Tisson and Lisa, they have such a big responsibility in our church because they're teaching the next generation. They're influencing them. What are you teaching your children this morning? Because if you're not just influencing your children, you're actually influencing the future generation. You're influencing church. You as a parent will never have a greater calling in life. There's no greater accomplishment in life than to see to it that you and your family know the right God, that you love the right God, you serve the right God, you obey the right God, and you get to spend eternity with the right God. This is why Proverbs, and I'm done, Proverbs 22 and verse 6 says, Train up a child in a way he or she should go, and when he or she is old, they will not depart from it. With that, I'd like every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Now you can see why I want the children to be in church today, to hear the message as well. I wanted them to hear the message. Why? Because when you begin to sit down with them and teach them values about church, values about Jesus Christ, it will play out. It will play out in their lives. And this is why parents... This is why I purposely finished with this scripture. To challenge you to train up your child. Train your child up. Grandparents, you have such a responsibility as well to teach your children, grandchildren. In the Bible, we have an account of people thanking their grandmothers and their mothers for their example of their faith. And maybe you're online today and you haven't been a very good example for your children. Maybe you haven't taught your children the godly ways of life. Or maybe you've taught them, but you haven't lived it yourself. You need to repent today and get right with Jesus. You need to repent today and get right with Jesus and pray that prayer on your screen and begin to teach your children. Even perhaps some of them may have flown the nest. You can teach your grandchildren. You can begin to have, amen, influence again for the next generation. You're here this morning. And I know perhaps it's not the message you wanted to hear today. But it's the message that God gave me to bring to our church. Because parents, you have a responsibility as you've heard today. And those of you one day, if Jesus tarries, will have children. You'll have children. You'll have an opportunity to teach your children values. But let me say this, you can speak to them, you can teach them, but let me tell you they watch your example. They get to see what you value in life by how you live your life. 
And if you're teaching your children the value of being in church and you're in church, if you're taking the time to pray with them, read the Bible with them, sing hymns and songs with them, there's nothing greater than training up your child in the ways of the Lord. It's nothing greater, church. Because God's promise is that if you train up your child in the way they should go, when they're old, they will not depart from it. And so, church, I want to encourage you to teach your children the right way. And I know it takes effort. It takes time. And sometimes you're going to be the bad guy. Because you're going to say, no, it's on a Sunday, we go to church. No, it's on a Thursday night, we're in church. So you get to make the decisions. You get to make the choices. And if they see that you're putting worldly pursuits before the house of God and the church of God, then guess what? Your children will do the same one day. They'll think church is not important. They'll think Jesus is not important. So it's important you teach your children the right ways whilst you still can. You're here this morning and you're not right with God. I want to give an invitation now that you're not right with Jesus and you want to repent of your sin and invite Jesus into your heart. You want a fresh start, a new beginning. If that's you, lift up your hand. And we'll pray for you today. Who would there be in this place? You're backslidden away from God and you want to come back to Jesus. Lift up your hand. And I want to change the order of the service. And parents, maybe you need to come to the altar and bring your children with you and pray over your children. Maybe, parent, you've been a lousy parent. Well, it's time to start afresh. It's time to correct those mistakes. Say, God, I didn't realize. I put some wrong values in my children. I repent of that today. And I'm going to begin to put in godly values in my family, and they're going to see me living these godly fa family values. And I'm going to believe Proverbs 22 that as I train my children, then they will not depart from that. These altars are open, church. Let's come. Parents, if you want to come with your children and pray, please do. Amen. Grandparents, amen. And perhaps some of you single people, maybe you can come and pray. Say, God willing that if one day I'm able to have children... God, let me put into them values that will last. God, let me remember to teach them the ways of you, Lord. Father, I thank you right now for every parent, for those that one day will be parents. God, I pray, God, let us teach our children what's important in life. As Joshua said, me and my family will serve the Lord. Let that be the cry of our hearts today. Let that be the cry of our hearts for our children and even our children's children. God, I pray that we would train our children in the way they should go. We would put into our children godly values, the importance of reading the word, of praying, of coming to church. And our children would see those values in us. They would get to know. And automatically, Lord, they would not depart from those things. And God, forgive us Forgive us for the times we put wrong values into our children. 
Forgive us as parents for the times that we've valued worldly pursuits over a relationship with Jesus. God, we repent today. We repent when we've perhaps loud birthday parties, cinema, TV and movies uh, over the values uh, of a relationship with Jesus. God, forgive us and give us that conviction today to train our child or our children or our grandchildren in the way they should go. That when they are older, they will not depart from that. We claim that. And as the words of Joshua, me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Let that be the cry of your heart, parent. Let that be the cry of your heart. Father, I pray that every parent would understand they're not just influencing their children here and now, but they're also influencing their children's children, future generations. God, help us. We need the Holy Spirit right now. Let us be, let us persevere, God, in training up our children. Showing them the true values of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let them automatically see that value in us. And forgive us, Lord, for the times we haven't done that. But this day forward, this day forward, we're going to learn to teach our children the right ways. And not allow the world's influence to destroy what you're trying to do, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh God. Father, I pray over every parent, every child in this place. Let our children desire the things of you. God, let parents have that value and desire to want to serve you wholeheartedly. I pray right now as I speak over this church, over every parent... There would be a hunger and a thirst to teach our children the godly values of life. And our children would see our values for Jesus. And they would take on those values. And we come against the world's influence. And we speak resurrection power in our children and our children's children. And God, we pray you would raise up the next generation. Give them more of a zeal and more of a passion for the things of you. God, let them stand and be counted for what's right. Let them be the godly examples of the future. Lord, I pray, help us as parents to remain strong and convicted and have these values that we would always adhere to, that we would always strive to keep in our homes. And as Joshua said, me and my family will serve the Lord. We pray this in the name of Jesus over every parent, over every child, and over every household. 
In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's uh, give God praise. Uh, Amen this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand. We're going to sing a song of worship uh, as we close. Don't forget youth uh, this afternoon. Uh, don't forget church tonight. We have church tonight uh, at 6.30. Come out and join with us. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. The King of all days, so, so highly exalted. Glorious in heaven above Harmony you came to the earth you created All for the sake became poor yes, oh Here I am God Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. I'll never know. I'll never know how much it costs. To see my sin upon that cross, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Yes, thank you, O oh Heavenly Father. Thank you, O oh gracious God. Church, make sure you teach your children the way of the Lord. Please, amen, do everything you can to take that time whilst you still have time. Amen. Take that time to teach your children. As Joshua said, make that decision. Me and my family will serve the Lord. Amen. Let's be out tonight, uh, youth this afternoon. Uh, amen. Brother Brian, if you'd close us in a word of prayer, please.